All right, so hey, I want to talk real quick about uh, flipping commercial real estate and what it's about. You know, there's a lot of noise out in the marketplace. There's a lot of people that are brand new coming out of the woodwork talking about commercial real estate. Yeah, I get it. You know, it's intriguing. It's a money-making opportunity. There's no doubt about it. But what I find is that, you know, hey, if the, you know, if the shoes don't fit, you know, there's people out there talking about it, but, you know, they're just talking a big game. Like, you got one-trick ponies, you got people who stumble into these duplexes, triplexes, quadruplexes, and they take the paper and they move it from one side of the table to the next. But you gotta be careful on who you actually learn from because if you're out there and you're learning commercial real estate from someone who only has a few years experience in the business, or, you know, like I said, if the shoe doesn't fit, like if they're not actually doing the business with creative strategies, but they're just talking about, where do you think they heard it from? You know, they probably got my book, The Two Best Strategies to Profit with Commercial Real Estate. More than likely, they're out there, they're trying to teach, they're trying to do good. You know, that's fine. That's fine that they're trying to teach and help people. But you know, the fact is, if they have not had true success, experienced some failure along the way, because hey, you know, this is a big business. This is a big business. And you gotta be careful when you do this business. It's caveat emptor, buyer beware. You know, you stumble into the wrong deal, you get the wrong terms, you don't tie it up for the right price point, and then you find yourself in a, in a world of, of, you know, just a world of hurt. Maybe you can't even get out of the deal. I've seen people get stuck in deals with commercial real estate. So with commercial flipping, it's super important. It's super important to be able to get the right terms. And there's some things that you need to know before you ever want to determine if you're going to want to know anything else. You know, like first and foremost, like what's the best offer that they ever turned down? You know, if you want to flip a deal, you need to get it for the right price. You need to move that deal forward and have enough meat on the bone for the next person. You got to make sure that not only do you have the right price point, but that you sweeten the deal by getting the right terms. You got to get terms when you want to go ahead and wholesale commercial deals. These people are talking about it out there and I've watched some of their tutorials and I got to tell you, they need to learn more. They need to rewrite, reread the book one more time because they're out there and they're selling property that is in a small market, a tertiary market, a small little market that's like a C class to like a B minus property, not such a great location. I've seen deals that are in markets that are fully saturated where there's too much of any given product, whether it's gonna be multifamily, self-storage, mobile home parks. You know, I got people coming to me in, in multiple, multiple directions saying, Terry, can you push this to your commercials buyers club? Can you talk about this on the Wealth by Design podcast? You know, can you help me vet my, my potential buyers to make sure that they actually have the money to close and they don't have to go through a committee and have to try to get a loan. And then all of a sudden you drain your due diligence timeline. And then you're sitting back and you're saying to yourself, well, why wasn't I able to wholesale the deal? Well, there wasn't enough time to wholesale it. You couldn't actually move fast enough to find the buyer, actually marry the two together and close and receive that wire transfer for six figures plus. I mean, heck, two weeks ago, we received a wire transfer for 102,000. That's time-stamped wire transfer, 102,000 on a project that's out in Arkansas that we never stepped foot on, right? We barely did any due diligence on it. We did just enough to know that it warrants somebody to get in there and put their best foot forward to make sure they know exactly what they're buying. You know, we put that responsibility on the end buyer. It's not our responsibility. We get the right terms. This one had a 36 month seller finance deal, right? Talk about flipping commercial, right? This one had a 36 month seller finance note in place at 4% interest. We looked at exactly what the debt service would look like. We went to bankrate.com. We put in 4% on an interest only calculator. It kicked out the number. Well, we knew exactly our buy price and where that actual seller finance price is gonna be. We tied it up for 750, we sold it for 850. I had a $2,000 earnest money deposit in play. The seller carried 650 at 4% interest. The project was bringing in on the net income enough money to actually net the end buyer $5,300 in change every single month right out of the gate. Talk about sweet terms, that's a pretty easy deal to wholesale. And we had it only for a couple of weeks. 
and never stepped foot on the property. And we took a hundy and run. That's what it was, man. We took a hundred thousand dollars and ran, took a hundy and run. That's exactly what, what went on. And you know, here's another fact. We got three other projects that are in the pipe right now. One that's scheduled to yield a little over 400,000, one on the smaller end that's only 90,000, and then a third that's on the table right now. You could take advantage of this opportunity at commercialbuyersclub.com and you can see it, it's sitting right there. If it's not gone already, right? And that's uh, a project uh, that's a, a 121 unit and 11 car spaces, and that's located out in uh, Madison, Alabama. Wonderful property. It's all about the backstory. A uh, really nice gentleman who uh, who was the owner, and he, he's you know sitting on on this project, and ended up putting a new drive, put all the a new asphalt, new fence, new gate software, uh, painted all the doors, um, roofs are in great condition, and the property is just sitting there, ready for an end buyer to slide in and take it. And you know what? I have all the intent to close on it myself. But you know, I put it out to my buyers list and I say, look, this is a cash play. This isn't a seller finance play, but what you can buy it for to underwriting it at a 30% expense ratio and a 10% vacancy factor, which you're never gonna have that much expense and that much vacancy, but even underwriting it at a 30-10, the deal still, still is worth 1.5 million and change. And here, you know, we got the deal and it's on the market right now for 850. So somebody can step in at 850 and make themselves, you know, over 600 grand on the deal. And, and that's leaving enough meat on the bone for the next person to make it exciting when you're flipping commercial real estate. You can't go and try to flip commercial real estate when there's no meat on the bone. You know, you can't look at a project that's sitting at 100% occupancy and there's no upside. We realize upside from the vacancy factor. And when there's vacant property that's underperforming due to under market rents, and you can lower your expenses, cancel out that on-site manager that's not needed because we can modernize and automate self-storage facilities. Or when it comes to multifamily, we don't have to give a, a, an apartment to an on-site manager. It's not needed. There's ways to go ahead and automate the process to lower your actual expenses, adding more to your bottom line. And we explain this. Obviously, I'm a teacher, trainer, mentor, coach, but I explain this to the end buyer and, and it's all about educating the person that's potentially buying the property so they understand what their exit strategy is. And if they can, if they can achieve a certain number, then they're not buying these properties on a cap rate because they're underperforming. They're actually buying the property on its as is net income, but it's all about the spread. It's about what they lock it in for to what it's gonna be worth at its highest and best use. And if these folks can actually realize enough upside, like 850 to 1.5 million, you're just not gonna find that out there on LoopNet. You're not gonna find it out on Crexy for the self-storage or selfstorages.com or mobilehomeparkstore.com or just any of these websites. You're not just gonna stumble into a deal. You gotta actually make lemonade from lemons. And that's exactly the way I do it when I flip commercial property. So there's a lot of people out there training, mentoring, showing people what's going on in the marketplace of commercial real estate and flipping commercial. But if they can't show you a time stamp wire transfer that's just a couple weeks old, and we do this all the time, every single month, baby, it's like clockwork. And if you, if you cannot show that to that person that you're gonna be teaching and training, then you should not be a mentor you should not be a coach. And you guys shouldn't be learning from those people that cannot show and furnish this information. Because again, nothing's worse than learning from a broke person. Because look, if you're looking to duplicate success, you definitely want to duplicate it and be broke. You want to get in there and you want to build wealth. And wealth by design is the most powerful thing that you can do. You can write your own checks. Sky is not the limit. You can create opportunity from projects that are just sitting there. I'll give you an example. One of the things that my acquisition team here does in-house is we look for DOM, which is days on market. You know, we look for the days on market because your average broker's listing is 180 days, six months, right? So when you start seeing 153, 160, you're starting to see these numbers close to 180 days. Look, they, these brokers put time, they put energy, they put money into listing these properties. Not only that, they're drained. You know how many tire kickers they deal with and have to have these people, inquiries on LoopNet, inquiries from all these people that are just looking to get information but they're not really performing and they vet and deal with all these calls. They put all that energy into it. And then when you call, it's like a breath of fresh air. 
You know, you come in and you're talking terms, you're talking creative structures, you're talking ways to go ahead and put the deal under contract and then dangle the care to future business and let them know that once you reposition it, you have a T12, a rent roll and a profit and loss, you're going to drop it back in their lap so they can trade it at market cap and market rents and double dip, double dip and make money, right? Do it twice, do it twice. Sell it to you for the right price on the right terms. We fix it, we give it back to them and they go resell it. All right, that's the way you flip commercial property. You get it for the right price, and then you go ahead and off it, and you receive your wire transfer. And that's what it's all about, man, making six figures minimum. So if you dig what you hear, go ahead and click the link below. Go ahead and join me. You can check out my next upcoming uh, masterclass webinar, uh, and uh, I look forward to engaging with you here real soon. All right, it's been a pleasure. Take care. Talk to you soon.